Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. So the example I gave you in class was um, that the more hours I worked, the more income I made per week. And that's an example of direct variation. You've done direct variation in Algebra 1, um, and we're going to talk about three different kinds of variation. One is direct. I'll talk about the other two here in a second. Um, so the equation I used in my example was I equals KH, where I was income, H is the number of hours I worked, and K was the constant. It was the only thing that stayed the same throughout the whole example, which which was what I made per hour. So that was the constant. Um, we're going to talk about three different kinds of, of variation. Um, first, we're going to talk about direct, and then we'll talk about joint and inverse variation, but you kind of do them the same way. I'll teach you a way to do each of these variation problems that's the same, except for step number one for each of the of the different kinds of variation. At the bottom here, k is known as the constant of proportionality or the constant of variation. Um, you have to know both of them because the SOL will, will use either one, but most of the time in class I'm just going to use the word constant. Um, I'll just, just say, okay, the variable k or the constant. So when I say constant, I really mean constant of proportionality or constant of variation. All right, so how do you do any of these variation problems? Well, I'm going to use an example of a direct variation problem here, but it really applies to all three of the different variations. The only thing that changes is step one. Step two and step three are, are always the same. All right, so step number one, write the equation in variable form. Well, my example is if y is directly proportional to x, so I'm going to start there y is directly proportional to x. So when I see the word direct, that tells me it's a direct variation problem. Um, now it could say y is directly proportional to x, y direct varies directly as x, but they both mean the same thing. It means y equals k times x. Um, direct variation is a multiplication. Kind of the same way a joint variation problem is the same as, as um, direct. It's, it's a multiplication. Um, but the inverse variations are um, different. They're division problems, but you'll see that later. Okay, step number two. And again, step number one was the only thing that's different between direct, inverse, and joint variation. I would write those equations differently. And that's from the last slide. Each of those standard forms I would use here in step number one. Now, let's say it said S is directly proportional to T. So S would equal K times T. So the, 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 um, the variables may change, but it's always going to be in that form. Okay, step number two, plug in initial values and find k. Okay, so it says y is 6 when x is 2. All right, so y is 6. I don't know what k is. That's what I'm trying to find here. And x is 2. Okay, so in order to solve for k, I would divide both sides by 2, so k equals 3. Okay, step number 3, find the missing value using k. I now know my constant. So if I had told you in the previous example, um, I made $100 and I worked, let's say, um, 10 hours, you could figure out that I made $10 an hour. So that's the k. That's what I just did in step number 2. I figured out, I knew what both of my variables were, I figured out what the constant was. And that's what I found, I found k to equal 3. So now, when I want to find my new value, so if I want to find y when x is 5, I can now come down here and say, okay, well, I want to find y. My k, I know, is 3, so I'm going to plug that into the equation. And my new x is 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. So my answer to the problem is 15. So one thing you can do to check the problems is, since this is a direct variation problem, both of the variables should go in the same direction. If my hours worked went up, then my income went up. If my hours worked went down, then my income went down. That's direct variation. They both go in the same direction. So my x went from 2 to 5. It went up. So that means my y should go up. It went from 6 to 15. And it did go up, so that means that it sounds reasonable. All right, let's try a problem. If W is directly proportional to Z, and W equals 15 when Z equals 3, find W when Z equals 8. All right, so first step, step number one, is write the, write the equation in variable form. 
Um, so W is directly proportional, and there's that word directly. So W is directly proportional to Z. So W equals KZ. Step two, find K. I want to find my constant. Because if I know my constant, then I can find either one of the variables if I know the other one. Um, so W equals 15. So really, I'm just plugging numbers into stuff I know. Uh, Z is 3, and I don't know what K is. So I want to solve for K. So in this case, divide both sides by 3. K equals 5. Step number 3. Uh, find W when Z equals 8. So find W. My K is 5, and my Z is 8. So 5 times 8 is 40. There's my final answer. Now I just want to check to make sure that it sounds reasonable. My Z went from 3 to 8. It went up. My W went from 15 to 40. It went up. Sounds like a reasonable answer. Hi, our example is if A is directly proportional to the square of B and A equals 18 when B equals 3, find A when B equals 5. All right, so I'm going to start with um, writing the equation in variable form. So A is directly proportional to the square of B. There's the word directly, so that means that I'm going to go um, A equals K times B squared because it's the square of B. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, find K. So my A is 18. Don't know what K is. My B is 3, but if I square the B, I have to square it the whole way through the problem. So I want to solve for K, so 3 squared is 9, 18 divided by 9, K equals 2. Step number 3, find A when B is 5. So K is 2, I found that in the last step. My B is 5, but I need to square that. So 5 squared is 25, times 2 is 50. And I want to check to make sure it sounds reasonable. Um, A went from 18 to 50, so it went up. B went from 3 to 5, it went up, so it sounds like a reasonable answer. Hi, so let's solve the example. If R is directly proportional to T and R equals 150, when T equals 2, find T when R is 450. Okay, so uh, first step is I look for what kind of uh, variation problem it is it, and it's direct variation in this case. So R is directly proportional to T, so R equals K. Um, and R is 150, so I want to find K now when T is 2. Alright, so that means K is 75. So 150 divided by 2. Um, now it says find T when R equals 450. Alright, so notice here, the other examples, we were finding what was on the left side of the, of the equal sign over here. But in this case, I'm given that number, and I want to find t, which is on this side of the equation. So let's plug it in. It's not hard. Just got to make sure you read the question correctly. So 450 equals k is 75, and I'm looking for t. So in order to solve for t, I need to divide both sides by 75. So um, 450 divided by 75, t equals 6. So let's just check to make sure they are both going in the same direction. My R went from 150 to 450. It went up. My T went from 2 to 6. It went up. Sounds right.